All right, we can move on to slope and our slope formula. Um, so slope is a ratio, that's why it looks like a fraction, of vertical change, the rise, to horizontal change, the run. We have two ways to find slope. You've got a slope formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and you also have a rise over a run. So depending on what type of problem you're looking at, one of these will be more appropriate. So this y2 minus y1, you're going to use that if you're finding slope from ordered pairs. And the rise over run, you're going to use this if you're trying to find the slope from a graph. So two ways to find the slope depending on what the example is. Um, slope has four different possibilities in terms of what it might look like. You can have a positive slope. So a positive slope, and this little m, I'm not exactly sure why m stands for slope, but this means that your slope is greater than zero. So anytime your slope is greater than zero, you have a positive slope. I like to refer to this as an uphill line. So if you, when we read graphs, we read them left to right. So if I come in on the left side of this graph and see how I hit the line, and I continue on the line, am I going up a hill or down a hill? So you can see this is going uphill. So any positive slope should have an uphill line. A negative slope, so if your slope is less than zero, will have a downhill line. So you come in, hit your line, and you're going down. So that's a downhill line. You also could have a zero slope and an undefined slope. I tend to call these horizontal and vertical lines special. It's an easy way to remember. So these are your special lines, your horizontal and your vertical lines. So a horizontal line, every single one that's horizontal will have a zero slope. It's not positive, it's not negative, it's neutral right in the middle, so zero slope. And then your vertical lines will have an undefined slope. So here's an example, find the slope. This is from um, a graph, so this means that we can count the rise over run. So two things, well, at least one thing I want you to remember when you do rise over, over run, and believe it or not, a problem like this, even though it's as easy as just counting, gets messed up a lot by students. So what I want you guys to do, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in and make this bigger. You've got two points, and you're just going to count the rise over the run in between them. Um, I want you to start with the point on the left. So if you start with a point on the left, that's going to help you out. And the other thing I want you to do is the rise first. So we do point on the left, and we do the rise, and that's going to help us get the correct slope. All right, so starting on the left, we can rise up or rise down to get the, to the point on the right, and you can see we have to rise down. So we're going to go down one, two, three, four, until we're in line with the other point we're trying to get to. Because we went down four, that's a negative four. Now we're going to run to the right. You guys will always run to the right when you start on the left. So we're going to run one, two, three, four, five, six. So our run is a six. Now when you put your slope together, remember slope is a ratio or a fraction, you put the rise over the run. So the rise is negative four and the run is a six. So our slope is negative four over six, which is great. However, if you can reduce a fraction, you have to reduce it. So negative four over six, they can, both of those numbers can be divided by two and we end up with a negative two over three. And that is our reduced slope. So from a graph, just count your rise over run. Start on the left and do the rise first. If you can remember those two things, you'll get these problems right. All right, let's run through how to find the slope from ordered pairs. Uh, I think it's very helpful to label your ordered pairs. So our first point we can label as x1, y1. Our second point is x2, y2. Then we just follow our slope formula because these are ordered pairs. We're going to do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, 1. All right, so then you're just plugging the numbers in. y2 is a 2 minus. Now, if you see, I said 2 minus. This subtraction, I always write down, and then I look to see what is my y1. So the y1 is a negative 1, so I end up subtracting a negative. Anytime you subtract a negative, that becomes positive. And then sometimes, instead of writing it twice, I'll recognize that and just make it positive in the beginning. So 
What I mean by that is x2 minus x1, our x2 is a 2. I write my minus, then I go and I look at my x1, which is a negative 2. So in my head, I'm subtracting a negative, which makes this positive, so I can go ahead and write plus 2 right away. 2 plus 1 is 3, 2 plus 2 is 4. Is it reduced? Yes, it is. So we were done. That is our slope. All right, let's do another one. x1, y1, x2, y2. So slope, just follow y2 minus y1. So 4 minus 1 over x2 minus x1. 6 minus, and then I notice that my x1 is negative. So minus a negative becomes plus 3. 4 minus 1 is 3. 6 plus 3 is 9. 3 over 9 is great. However, let's reduce it. You can divide both numbers by 3 and get a 1 over 3. Okay, this is our last slide, and so you may feel like, oh, come on, I know how to do slope, but there is something that happens on these, so these are important to have in your notes as well. It's a little bit trickier. Here's your x1, whoa, y1, x2, y2. So let's see what happens when we find our slope. y2 minus y1, negative 3 minus y1 is a negative 3, so minus the negative becomes plus 3 over negative 6 minus 4. So negative 3 plus 3 is actually 0. Over negative 6 minus 4 is a negative 10. So I wanted to show you guys a couple examples where 0 shows up in your fraction. So if 0 shows up in your slope, this is either a vertical line or a horizontal line, which means our slope will be 0 or it will be undefined. Your calculator will be a huge help on this. If you take your, take your calculator and you say, what is 0 divided by negative 10? It will tell you that this answer is 0. So the slope of this line is equal to 0. It's a horizontal line if we were to graph it. All right, let's look at the next one. x1, y1, x2, y2. So our slope is 2 minus a negative 1 becomes plus over 5 minus 5. So we have 3 over 0. So there's that 0 again. It's showing up in our slope. This will either be 0 or undefined. If you type in 3 divided by 0 on your calculator, so go ahead and give it a try if you have a calculator with you, it's going to give you an error message. And it might even tell you that the error is that you're trying to divide by 0. In math, you can never divide by 0. So if you have a 0 down here, um, that is undefined. Whoa. So we actually do have to write out the word undefined. And then in our heads, we just know, oh yeah, that's a vertical line. Um, one way that you can predict that these might turn out as zero or undefined slopes, if you take a look at the, the points from the beginning, did anyone notice that the y's were the same number? If the y's are the same number, when you subtract them, you get a 0. In the second example, the x's are the same number. So when you subtract the x's, you get a 0 down here. So you can kind of predict when that might happen. Um, if the y's are the same or the x's are the same, you're going to end up with a 0 slope or an undefined slope, depending on which example you have.